Hello and welcome to another MI How To video. I'm your host, Tony, and today we have with us a special guest, Mr. Mark Green from Flexco. And he's here to show us how to properly splice a narrow, endless Belton house using the Novatool Aero 325 splice press. Hi, Tony. Thanks for having me. Of course. So, Mark, can you give me a little background on what you need to perform a good and quality splice consistently? Well, Tony, the key to quality begins with a few things. First and foremost is your belt selection. Okay. And since we're talking about splicing narrow belts that drive live rollers today, our top choice is the new motion industry red drive belts. Okay. Red drive belting has a 30 to 35% longer life and increased durability over the OEM product. These belts are designed with a reinforcement to be more flexible, matched with a TPU compound that will produce more grip and reduce cracking. The splice is designed around the Aero 325 to feature a reduced splice time by 75%. Plus, it's available in two different styles, the Red Drive 77 and the Red Drive 45. So it sounds like you made the right decision when your belt choice, but what else do we need to do? Well, it's important to have the right tools on hand, and we have that right here with the Novatool Aero 325 splice press and the narrow belt templates. So why the Aero 325? The Aero 325 is lightweight and portable for producing consistent, high-quality splices. The newest member of the Aero family is just the right size for narrow belts used in live roller drive systems. In fact, the narrow belt templates fit these applications perfectly. And I understand from what you were saying before that it gets the job done pretty quickly too, right? Yes, with splice times as low as 18 minutes, the Aero 325 can repair a live roller belt in a third of the time of traditional splice presses. Okay, so we have the belt and we have the tools. I'm eager to see this thing in action. So let's start splicing. But before we do that, I should mention that we should be wearing the proper PPE for our jobs today. For this demonstration, we just require our safety glasses and some gloves. All right, Mark, whenever you are ready, lead the way, sir. All right. Well, we know we have the tools on hand, so what we're going to do first is we're going to take the top beam of the press off. So if I can have you loosen those hold down bolts and then pivot them out like mine, gotcha. and then let's go ahead and lift this whole beam right off the top and lay it behind. Perfect. Okay, and then we're going to remove the silicone cloth. <clears throat> so why don't you go ahead and hand me um, that template there and we'll lay it on. So notice that the corners have been cut out and they fit right in between the studs of these these thumb nuts right it here. Just slides in okay. There. Next we can go ahead and slide our pre-punched belt in. Now these belts were punched with the Novatool Panem NDX. So you see the nice precise fingers? You'll see how nicely they just fit together once we get them in here. So okay. I'm going to go ahead and put my first belt end in. Just like so. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring my other belt end in so they mesh nice and tight in amongst each other there. Okay, once I get them lined up, I'm just going to push them in place. See how nicely those go together? Yep, yep. Okay, so next step is take your end clamp and go ahead and lightly tighten that in place. Okay, next step is going to be the pressure plate. Now we want to check the alignment of the pressure plate. It's important that it lies right over top of the belt itself. See how it's in good alignment there? Mm -hmm. um, the pressure plate, the purpose of this is to make sure when the splice process is happening that we get a nice even pressure across the entire length of the splice. And that's going to give you some really consistent results. Okay. So let's go ahead, remove this, and <clears throat> let's go ahead and clamp the template into the bottom beam of the press. Now you can go on the outside, right. I'll go on the inside. Looks Good like you've job. done this before. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> okay. Looks like you've done this before. So next step is I'm going to put my silicone cloth on. Notice I'm not using any silicone sprays, no aerosols or anything here. Okay. The bottom template is made of t silicone. The top cover is silicone. I can just simply put this on. So they're both acting as release agents, okay? Gotcha. Now that template, we know it's in perfect alignment. We can rest it in place right in between the cutouts here on those end clamps. Next step, let's put this beam on. Okay. And then you can go ahead and clamp your end and I'll clamp my end. Great job. All right. Okay, so next step is we're gonna have to power the press up. So this umbilical comes from the top beam and we're gonna plug it into the bottom beam and latch it in place. 
and then we'll just take the main power cord. First we'll plug it into the press at the bottom beam and then we'll go ahead and have someone plug it into the wall. You got it. All right, now we're ready to plug it in and fire it up. So I'm just going to turn my power on here at the bottom. My display is going to have me confirm that I'm using a 110 volt 15 amp cord, so I'm going to say that's correct. And then if we look at the display, it says red drive 77, but you and I both know we're not splicing the red drive 77, we're doing the 45 millimeter exactly. red drive, right? So what I can go do now is go down to my load, recipes, go to my folder here, my custom folder, depress my knob, and then look at that. There's a red drive 45 recipe already programmed into the press. So I'm just going to click on that. And all I have to do now is hit the start button and we're ready to go. Okay, so can you explain what the recipe is exactly? So the recipe is based on three things. It's based on pressure, it's based on temperature, and it's based on time, how long we want to cook it, just like you were cooking cookies or something like that. All right, Tony, I think we're ready to start the splice. So all I need to do now is just hit the green button. All right, so what you're hearing right now, we talked about those three splice parameters, pressure, temperature and time. Right now we're working on pressure. Okay. So all we need to do now is simply wait and once this alarms, we know it's done, we can open up the press and inspect the splice. I'm assuming that waiting is where the time comes in. You're exactly right. <laughs> all right, Tony, you heard the alarm, right? Yeah. All right, the total cycle time was 17 minutes and 28 seconds. Wow. All we have to do now is depress the pressure release button and we can inspect our splice. And now we can take everything apart and check the splice out, right? That's right. Okay. Here's our pressure plate. We can take that off. Notice how it's not sticking to anything. Wow. And then we can go ahead and remove the silicone cloth. Whoa. Okay. And there's our splice. Take note of the fact that you can't see any of those fingers anymore. Right? No. So we've, we can see that the splice results are great on the top side of the belt. Let's go ahead and unclamp the belt. All right. And let's pull it out and let's flip it over. Wow. Look at those fingers are filled completely in. Wow, that looks great. And it looks like we definitely chose the right belt and the right tool for this job. Yeah, this is a great example of a quality splice. And that was really fast and easy. I could see how this would be a really valuable tool to have on site for your maintenance crew to use. And just speaking for myself, the training seemed really a breeze. Yes, the portability and ease of use is key. As featured in a different MI how-to video, all of our aero presses have a recipe management tool that stores recipes for future use, making training easy and providing consistent quality splices every time. Now, is on-site training something that Flexco does? Absolutely, Tony. The Flexco team is always available to demonstrate the product and help train crews. You can contact your Motion Industries rep to get that scheduled. Mark, thank you so much for coming in today and talking with us about endless splicing using the Aero 325 splice press. Thanks for having me, Tony. Of course. <laughs>